Welcome back, Zero K fans! Okay, apparently, Lori did not need that long of a break, so... We are back, we are on Ravaged, and this is the bronze match, by the way, this is the bronze tournament match. So whoever wins this, wins third place, whoever loses, wins fourth place, which isn't terrible, but, anyway. So... We will be starting this up pretty shortly. So, we... Just as soon as the player's on pause, I was actually getting lunch, but apparently that's going to not be the case. I'll have to wait on that. So, Klon starting out with light vehicles and Ravaged, and Lori starting out with shield bots. I'm curious if Lori's going to try to do any terraform shenanigans to stop the vehicles from getting around. Like I said before, that happened to me once, but I don't know. But with the... So you start up here, so Klon going very quickly for e Com. He's going for metal, very fa very very fast metal. No wins for actually both for Lori and Klon. No quick wind generators. Given the height of this map, that's actually not a bad idea. Very common you'll see people with a string of wind generators between metal extractors, just to maximize the amount of energy they get and maximize the overdrive. We aren't seeing that right now, and Klon actually hasn't scouted out Lori's base yet, or if he has very little, he hasn't harassed it. That's for sure. But Lori also has not seen what Klon's doing. Klon is going for exactly that windmill arrangement I mentioned. Putting it between the two and therefore getting a bit of an energy advantage. While Lori not focusing very much on energy yet. He's... I mean, he has equal energy and metal at the moment, so it's not the biggest deal right now. But he probably should get a few more power plants before continuing. Especially before continuing with more metal. Especially since he's going for shields. He's, he needs to have that energy in order for the shields to work out effectively. Especially them to charge and so forth. I think small shields don't need energy, but large shields most certainly do. So it's something to keep in mind. Lori is building a few more wind generators, not connecting this presently enough. He's not doing for going for connected overdrive, which Klon is. And Klon getting up some scorches as well. That will be That'll be interesting. See how the bandits fare. We did see that Scorches do a really good job against Glaives, but bandits are tougher than Glaives are. Our Glaives are coming in, hitting the commander pretty hard, actually. I mean, able to get it down to about half health before being chased off by the Scorchers. And one of the bandits nearly kills the Scorcher, so I'd say if the rest of the bandits were there, the Scorchers would have a harder time. Probably would have lost one or two of their number before taking down the bandits. So, Klon getting up a few more Scorchers, just to make sure... He has quite a few Scorchers now, actually. In fact, he's quite the military advantage on Lori at the moment. Lori does have a few bandits here and there, but he has about half a dozen bandits in his base compared to four Scorchers, five Scorchers now, which are closing on him, as well as a nice dart that's scouting out, figuring out when the expansion's going to occur to this section over here in the south. When that happens, Klon will be the first to know. Well, okay, Lori will be the first to know, and then we'll also know, but then Klon will know pretty much at the same time, assuming he's paying attention. Which is a safe assumption. At 2200 LOI, I imagine that he's quite good at map awareness. And we move Scorchers in, and we will see how they fare against the bandits. The bandits are moving back. They're actually clumping up, which is a terrible idea. They need to be in a line in order to actually defend, but the commander is there to help out, and the Scorchers have decided to run off and not deal with that head-on. At this point, with the bandit support, it might be hard... No, the Scorchers are going in. They're trying to go for the comm kill. They are going to snipe the commander. They got the commander. They... All died in the process, killing all the bandits as well. So, ultimately, able to kill everything they needed to, though, admittedly, if a couple of them had managed to survive, these metal extractors would have been toast. And so actually would most have been Lori's base. In fact, I think if those Scorchers had survived, Lori probably would have lost the game. I'm serious. I think, I think the fact that the destruction of the commander blew up those last two Scorchers is the reason why Lori has not completely lost this game to Scorchers tearing apart his base. However, the Scorchers are still forthcoming. There are still more Scorchers coming in. This Outlaw is going to be able to help out, but... More Scorchers are forthcoming. Roaches are in, however, and those will be able to stop any Scorcher harassment that's attempted at the moment. Which is not actually being attempted. Klon's not going for it. He's, he's continuing to build up. He got the comm snipe, which reduced Lori's economy, since Lori's comm was a E-Cell comm. He was going for that E-Cell. Klon, Klon also going for E-Cell beam laser. Very typical comm setup. And the Roach actually being sent further forward. Looks like Lori trying to push out with that. 
And he is reclaiming that commander, so his economy is not doing terribly, despite l the loss of the commander. He does need more power plants, but his metal's okay. And, however, that being said, these Scorchers are still to get in and deal a lot of damage. They aren't getting close to the outlet to deal with it, because the Roach really is their big threat. I'm not sure if Klon is aware of that Roach, though. He does not appear to be! He's about to run into it! One, no, running one of these Scorchers into it. And able to get rid of it harmlessly. Diffused that Roach quite effectively, keeping his own forces out of the way. Klon is really taking this game. He's taking map control. He has most of the economy, and he is going to be able to get rid of this outlaw without too much issue. Getting rid of the convict as well once he gets around to it. Now, of course, he has slowed those... That did slow down the Scorchers. That is going to help Lori a bit, because it does mean that's just more damage being dealt, but... Sorry, more damage being dealt by bandits compared to what the Scorchers can do. But the Scorchers still have to get rid of a couple of the builders. Still able to get rid of... Not quite able to get rid of a third, but able to get rid of a lot of the metal extractors. Well, a metal extractor, but still... Dealing with this pretty effectively. Now, Lori does have quite a few bandits in place. More Scorchers are forthcoming, but at this point... They're starting to be outnumbered, and Slashers are coming in to help out the Scorchers. This is probably to provide a bit of fire support, a bit of artillery support in the back. And Roaches as well for Lori. He's doing a pretty good job setting those up. Although, admittedly, the last one did get defused, but that wasn't a good choke point. I mean, that was a great place to put it. However, this Roach here, not quite in front, not quite in position to actually deal with the Scorchers yet. It is moving into said position, and the Scorchers are being lured into it. And they're about to get on top of it. Is that Roach going to get... No, that Roach is not going to get up to hit them. And it is still cloaked. Lori still has enough energy to keep it cloaked, but... Actually, it's Burrow, so it doesn't really matter about energy. But yeah, that Roach is not coming into attack yet. The Bandits are going to be able to take care of the Scorch without too much issue, but... Still, that Roach, however, did expose itself. It... Not indecently, mind you, but it did make Klon aware of what is going on, that there is a Roach there trying to kill him running back to base, and the bandits, like I said, are doing a pretty decent job. There are enough bandits that's not the biggest deal. However, because the Scorchers do outrange them, and the Slashers outrange them, the bandits are going to have a hard time truly dealing with this. A felon... A felon and a bunch of thugs coming in. It looks like Lori is trying to use his bandits to buy himself some time to get that felon and thug combo to really come through. And if it does so, that'll be very difficult for Lori to deal with... Sorry, for Klon to deal with. And the Roach goes down. The bandits and the Scorchers are... Fighting it out, but the bandits are losing. The Scorchers are not taking enough damage for it to be worthwhile. A few of their number were lost, but all the bandits were lost in the process, and no time further can be bought. More thugs being built, more constructors being built, sorry, more convicts being built, and an asp is on top of that as well, but this is going to be tricky to see how it works. It, it probably won't work out. I mean, it, it might, but I kind of doubt it. With the amount of forces coming in, there, with shield regen from the convicts, there is a possibility that it'll work out. The thugs, of course, are still fire support, so it's still something. But this felon is running very quickly out of shield energy, and Lori throws in the towel. That is game one. Game one of the third place bronze match between Klon and Lori. Klon wins. So we're going to be moving on to game two very shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the second match of the sorry, second game of the bronze match of the January eleventh, twenty fourteen Zero K tournament, which is between Klon and Lori. So Klon won the first match. Lori needs to get back in there, but Lori, being able to choose the map, did decide to go with Red Comet as he did against Saktoth, and we saw how that worked out against Saktoth. So we'll see how it works out against Klon. Klon going for heavy tanks. I believe Sakta did that as well. And Lori not quite going for... Okay, light vehicles for Lori. Heavy tanks for Klon. I expect to see Panthers. Actually, God didn't go heavy tanks. I don't think he did. Regard no, it wasn't God. It was Saktoth. Saktoth didn't go heavy tanks. But regardless, that's not what matters. What matters is that Lori is fighting against heavy tanks. And heavy tanks means Kodachis followed by Panthers. Followed by a lot of expansion. Followed by Reapers and Banishers. But I think... The way the game is right now, it'll probably stop at Panthers. Also, I believe that there was someone who wanted... Who was it? There was someone I remember, Chesty. Yeah, Chesty wanted to see on Red Comet... No, it was Tanks vs. Tanks on Red Comet, not Tanks vs. Light Vehicles. So this isn't quite exactly what Chesty wanted to see. It was a little while ago. Total offhand comment, but anyway, if Chesty's watching, 
Hopefully this is close enough for you. Anyway, Lori is getting himself set up. Getting himself set up slower than Klon is. He does have only two metal extractors and a wind gen, which is not doing much. While Klon getting three metal extractors, he's purely relying on E-Cell at this point, but at least he's a bit ahead in metal. He's a bit ahead overall in economy. And the Kodachi now getting rid of this dart. So, Heavy Tank has been revealed. Lori knows what Klon is up to, more or less, but whether or not he'll have the right counter for it, it's hard to say. Especially since I don't know offhand what the proper counter for the levelers against... Sorry, against... Not levelers. Levelers are the thing that people think might be the counter, but... Or suggested it's... There's been a lot of balance discussion about Panther balance and about how to counter Panthers. I... We'll see what Lori comes up with for trying to deal with them. Because I'm sure he's well aware that Panthers are his concern. That is what will be most important right now, is the Panthers need to be dealt with. If the Panthers are not dealt with, they will destroy Lori. Now, being that Lori is playing light vehicles, he probably is going to be able to get more vehicles for the same amount of metal. So if his economy remains even with Klons, he should be able to outnumber the Panthers and at least have a chance that way. Which is typically the best way of dealing with him. And the Kodachi is going to be going down very quickly! There we go! Oh, not quite! The Kodachi's not quite down yet! There we go! It's just out of range of the heat rays. But that Kodachi only able to damage a couple Scorchers. Not even kill anything. That Unit was a attack. good play by Lori. He managed to deal with that Kodachi without losing anything in the process. Very cost effective, and he even has a Kodachi wreck to reclaim. For a nice sweet 72 metal. That's a nice metal extractor on its own. And he didn't even have to use it to rebuild a metal extractor. He lost none. Very nicely done there. So Lori is getting a bit ahead very early on, but Panther has started to be built by Klon. He's getting more and more Panthers. He has a welder as well, so he's starting to expand fairly quickly. Expanding towards the north, more or less, but not too committed to that yet. While Lori is expanding along the north side, he's not expanding towards the south, expanding tw along the north side, so we, they will meet up fairly quickly. And the Scorcher's up against the Panther. This should go in the Scorcher's favor unless the Panther runs away, and it should be able to run away pretty effectively. Panthers are not slow. But if it goes in the wrong spot, it actually is, looks like it's going to get surrounded. These Scorchers are getting surrounded. They're going to surround Klon's comm, and that comm is sniped. Klon's commander is as good as dead. Down it goes. And no Scorchers lost in the process either. Very impressive by Lori, keeping them at max range at the very end. That might have been a bit of a fluke, but still nicely done. Unfortunately, the Lotus, actually the Lotus is going down in time, but the Lotus goes down at the same time as the Scorcher. Bit of a waste on there, but still, he got rid of the commander. He got rid of Klon's commander, and Klon's energy economy was almost entirely focused on the commander. These solar collectors, those are the only non-com East energy sources that Klon had. Very important to note. So, at this point, more, pan or more Scorchers will be forthcoming from the looks of it. Panthers will also be built up, but the thing is, at this point, Klon's behind an economy. He's really stalling now. He only has... He can only half builds he only has to be in the factory he's not even building in the factory anymore he's focused entirely on building up solar panels at this point Lori could just go for the kill he could finish off this panther he could go for the kill on everything else immediately laser turret's still up but he could go into the base and deal with that just directly attack the base and it looks like he knows or he's not sure he's, he's aware of this or not he doesn't appear to be quite so confident but he is positioning himself probably going to go from where he is there all the way over to here and that will across this line and that will basically win him for it and it looks like that's exactly what he's doing making sure to keep any new scorchers in the group uh, no he's falling back why is he falling back does he no he does not see what's going on in the base so he's just clearly underconfident about what he can get away with and at this point Klon has rebuilt his economy up was well, energy up to his metal so he's not stalling anymore for energy has a lot of metal he can work through and his energy should be pushed up a bit, so he's going to actually have a lot of build power for the next minute or so. And at this point, Lori's losing his window. He had a really good window there. He's using that window instead to build gunships, which is an interesting choice. Not sure if I agree. Depends on what he builds. If he builds a bunch of banshees, I can totally see it. If he builds a bunch of brawlers, I will be very much surprised. If he goes for rapiers, I would also be kind of surprised, but not as surprised as, ban as brawler. If it goes for Black Dawn, I actually wouldn't be surprised at all. Even though it would be very vulnerable to Panthers, it's also just be able to fire a bunch of missiles and kill all of them at once. So, or just go into the base and kill all of the stuff in the base at once. 
But Lori is definitely very concerned about losing his Scorchers. Even though he probably could get... Actually, at this point, the Panthers are becoming scary. At this point, I wouldn't attack. I would hold back. Lori is holding back, and that is the right thing to do. The thing is, there are three Panthers. There are about six Scorchers, but the Panthers can stun quickly enough if they're switching targets to stop pretty much any of the Scorchers from holding a target for long enough to deal enough damage to the Panthers for it to matter. But seven Scorchers, that actually might make a difference. And coming in, might be just the right angle. Actually, it looks like it is just the right angle. Enough of the Scorchers able to get in in time and able to kill the Panthers. And that Panther is down. All the Panthers are down. Those Scorchers are completely through the defenses. The Panthers are gone. Laura can go in for the kill now. Not going for it yet, though. He's actually not focusing on the gunship plant at all. He's still focusing entirely on building Scorchers, but he's keeping those Panthers in check. That is important. It's going to be less important as time goes on, but it's important right now. Klon is building his economy. As the economy is built up, Panthers will become faster and harder, but for now, it's actually pretty effective to do this. And Lori going in for another attack, getting rid of this defender, another Panther to get rid of. However, he's losing a Scorcher in the process, but not the biggest deal. No, losing two Scorchers, okay, that's a bit, bit worse. In fact, three Scorchers. He is dealing some harassment damage, but not able to get rid of the Panthers before the Panthers get rid of him. Four Scorchers now. Okay, at this point, it's no longer been cost effective. He's able to get rid of some of the laser turrets, but he's actually lost a lot of Scorchers trying to keep the Panthers in check. And the Panthers taking some damage. A lot of harassment was dealt. A lot of information harassment. Klon no longer has radar, by the way. He's entirely relying on line of sight, which means he's going to have to worry about how much Lori has. I mean, he did have radar covered probably around here. But he doesn't have that anymore. He doesn't know what Lori is up to. Lori is attacking to the south, and Klon is defending to the north. I think Lori is going to take this. Klon's economy is going to take a lot of damage, and that will do him in. And right now, rapiers are coming in, so, as I said before, not terribly surprised. A little bit surprised, not completely surprised. And Scorchers are also coming in. Well, Scorchers Scorch from the south that we saw coming in earlier to finish off Blaze Turret. Once he gets rid of the Blaze Turret, should get rid of the... Oh, get rid of the Soul Plants, get rid of everything. These Scorchers basically have the game in the bag for Lori. So we're moving on to Game 3, most likely, after this. But we'll see if Klon can turn it around. The Panthers, server are going down, and there isn't a whole lot of defense. The Welders can sort of defend, but not well enough. Not against the Scorchers, and Klon realizes this, throws in the towel. That is game. So if you enjoyed that, and we will have Game 3 shortly, because it's 1-1. One to -one. Once again, Lori shows that he can very easily use... Red comment in order to turn the match around if it's not going in his favor. Be back shortly to see what he what Klon chooses and how it works out ultimately. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the final match of the final game of the third place match of the twenty third the Zero K one day tournament, January eleventh, twenty fourteen. We are seeing Klon versus Lori, and this is on Kaleo 2. Klon won game one, Lori won game two, and we are now on to game three. So let us begin. So Lori's in the northwest corner of the map, and Klon's in the southeast corner of the map. Klon going for Cloaky Bots, and Lori going very quickly for Cloaky Bots as well. This is not an uncommon factory choice in this map, but that is certainly a thing to do. So neither player actually building up anything with the Cloaky Bot factory yet. Both of them focused on economy first. This is a bit of a larger map, so it's not surprising that they are focusing on economy first. But they can get away with it, I mean. And for two, two metal extractors for Klon, two metal extractors for Lori, and a laser turret earlier for Klon than Lori, although Lori's is a bit more upfront. So Lori looks like he's a bit less worried about being attacked. He doesn't want to build his defenses first, getting his raiding first. At the same time, Klon is the opposite. He is focused a bit more on defenses, focused a bit more on making sure that he can avoid any raiders coming along the backside. Make sure that nothing can come along the back and use the mechs as cover. That's really important. And nothing will. This Lotus is right in the way. It, it, something along the other side, I don't think... Yeah, something along the other side of the mechs would actually be spotted by the Lotus. So it's not going to work out. And with Lori set up, he has a few glaives coming into the center. I should point out that this center water is deadly. Anything walking through it will die. But most units will avoid it entirely. I don't think most... Yeah, most units can't even pass through it. Just along the edge, you got to be careful about that. Also, if anyone were to ever play Amphibious Boss in this map for whatever reason, can't imagine why you'd play Amphibious, but if you did, you'd have no reason to. They'd die in there. Anyway, Lori 
having to... Wow, Klon is really focused on his defense here. He is very scared about being attacked. He's getting up a few glaze of his own to try to make sure he can deal with it if it happens, but he is very worried about being attacked. Lorg, on the other hand, he has no defenses other than what he had so far, but he is expanding out pretty quickly. His commander, B Particle Beam and e -Cell, he is going for this. He's going for Particle Beam early, and apparently that being as powerful as we've seen it to be, not surprising there. And Lori moving up his glaives to harass from the north rather than from the south. He can't harass from the south. There's, like I said, too much in the way. Now solar panels are in the way as well. And Lori's commander able to get rid of these glaives without issue, but losing the metal extractor in the process. The one that was halfway done, at least. No, actually, he's just about lost his commander. That actually is pretty close. <laughs> Didn't quite lose it, but that was close. However, that does mean that Lori does have reclaim he can work with. Getting more rectors, getting more glaives. Not getting, he's using primarily to get more economy, get more wind generators, which on this map, that's actually about the highest point. Yeah, your main base is about the highest point, so where he's putting them is just fine. The fact that his commander is so weak, though, means that another snipe could be coming. It isn't, however, Klon's not focused on that. He's focused on Zeus. Very early Zeus. Defense into Zeus, the glaze is a distraction. That's an interesting choice. I don't think it'll work especially well, and the glaives are going for a comp snipe of their own. The laser turret support won't be enough. The comm is going down. Those glaives will finish it off before the laser turret kills them and just barely dying in the process. But there goes Klon's commander. And Klon's commander was an e cell commander as well. So Klon is way behind in energy, slightly behind in metal, even on both though. So he's not going to completely stall like he did last game, but it is a tough thing. So Lori right now is ahead. Klon has no builders in this area. He has a Zeus, and he has Rector. No, Rector's coming up either. He has one in the, his base. He has some Glaives coming up. The Zeus is coming up as well, and the Glaives that fought did die, but they did kill the Calm in the process. So right now, Lori can really just keep pushing out a lot of forces. You can push out a ton of forces. You can expand around the map. He can take map control, really. Zeus cannot project map control. It can assault, but it can't... Unless you have a ton of them, which is not likely to happen at this stage in the game. You can't just keep a bunch of tabs on the map, keep an eye on where your opponent is, and go wherever they are to stop them. That cannot happen. Not with Zeus. So this Zeus here, good in defense from the north side, any harassment that comes in. And the south side, we do have a bunch of glaze coming along to try to defend, or try to harass, make sure that nothing can be built, possibly defend as well. But it looks like Lori is just going instead for size. Curious what he's going to do with that scythe. I don't think he's going to go straight for the Zeus. He's probably going to go straight for the main base, but we'll see if he goes for the Zeus instead. Tries to deal with that. If he does, that will be probably pretty effective. Not the most effective. I mean, the Zeus does have the EMP, but if he times it right with the Glaze, it could work out. Whereas with... Okay, there's that first Scythe. Another Rector coming up, so there's no big deal there. Glaive coming in the east side. Glaive coming in south. It's... No, it's avoiding the Zeus. Avoiding the Zeus quite well, in fact. Other Glaives coming in from Lori, and that will be... Sorry, from Klon. Lori's Glaives are not here. Most of the Glaives are on the other side of the map. The Scythe is coming. It looks like he was trying to time it out to deal with the Zeus. Not quite able to do so. Has to move back and loses a Glaive in the process. Lori's Commander has mostly healed itself up, though. So that early attack has been largely useless. And the Scythe, not in vision of the Zeus. The Glaive does need to defend it, but it's not in vision of the Zeus. However, it is getting in range. It's almost in range of the Glaives. Not quite. Able to dodge the Glaives effectively. And the Glaives are going north to see what they can do about Lori's Glaive, which is actually quite a lot. Able to get rid of it, no problem. And the Scythe here does not have any targets that are obvious at the moment. Lori is not focusing on it right now. He is instead actually going to bump into this Rector and revealing that he has a Scythe. Klon, well aware now that he has a Scythe. And that Scythe is not going to be able to do much. It can get rid of this Glaive, try to get rid of the Glaives around it, but... Really, Lori just lost the element of surprise, and that's all the Scythe really has going for it. So more Glaives are f coming in from Klon. He's building a... Actually, he's building nothing right now. He still has to rebuild his economy, so his metal has not been doing great. He really hasn't actually been expanding a whole lot, while Lori has been consistently expanding throughout this entire game. And Lori now has twice the economy of Klon. Klon has a fair amount of reclaim. We see he is reclaiming a lot. Of, he's reclaiming the Scythe. He's reclaiming whatever Lori throws him that fails to be dead. Or it fails to be death, but not fails to be dead. They succeed at dying, but then they end up becoming bot food. Warriors are okay. This is a good idea. Getting some warriors in to get rid of the glaives. However, okay, the warriors will have no problem. The problem is getting to the glaives. They're about 
nine glaives here, and the thing is, nine glaives is not great. I mean, it's not great to fight against. It's great to fight with, it's great to have, but nine glaives like that, a single warrior is going to have to go south. This, this laser turret is not going to be able to kill them all. Maybe one or two. Just one. Just one dies, the melee tractor dies, the entire south side is going down, and Lori's going to be able to take going to take a blow to his economy. He's going to be able to expand to the north, however, but he's going to take a pretty big blow to his economy. And that... That's going to be tough. That's going to be really hard for him to deal with. I mean, it's not quite so big of a deal yet. There hasn't been any big change. I mean, the Zeus is actually still alive. But there hasn't been any big change yet with the economy here. Now, Klon, most of his economy actually is coming from this commander. He doesn't have a whole lot of metal extractors up yet. He's not been expanding that. He's basically been focusing entirely on reclaim. And unfortunately, these glaives are not in a good position. The warriors, warriors just beat glaives outright. There's no way to get around that. Like I said, warriors just beat glaives outright. I kind of wish I didn't miss that, but apparently I did. Warriors here just tearing apart the glaives. So Lori keeps most of his economy intact. While the east side of the map, we see that he's doing a pretty good job harassing what had been built up, getting rid of the laser turret, getting rid of the metal extractor soon after, and the Zeus and warrior basically getting distracted and retreating from the Rocco and the Zeus combo from Lori. I'm not sure why Klon is retreating. He's probably just trying to get himself into... A... Yeah, it looks like he's getting all of his forces together before he goes back to a counterattack, which is actually being pretty effective. Now, unfortunately, this Glaive is taking advantage of the distraction, taking out... Well, dealing a bit of damage to that Zeus, but nowhere near enough to take it out. More Glaives are forthcoming from Lori. He's given up on Warriors from the looks of it, or rather, his Warriors are moving into the south. They are dealing quite a bit of damage to what is already there, but they aren't able to deal all that much, so... That's going to be quite a lot to work with there. I mean, he's basically got these two warriors that have nothing else in their way. Although, soon there will be a bunch of Zeus and warriors in their way. The North Glaive fight going on, which looks like it is going in Lori's favor. Klon is about even, though. It looks like both players are about even for Glaive count. And at the same time, the Warriors are coming in, but one of them going down pretty quickly. Able to deal some damage to the Zeus, but getting stun-locked before it's able to kill it. The other one has to just move back. There's not much that can be done there, which basically means that it's going to be... Hmm. It's going to be a fairly interesting fight. However, in the North, see the North fight with the Glaives is going to be a... Well, it's going to be a massacre, really. Klon has lost all of his glaives, has to retreat. Lori's glaives are doing a great job right now. Klon's glaives are not. Unfortunately. And Lori, that economic advantage has been huge for him right now. It's, It's been insane. I mean... The sheer amount of... The sheer amount of forces coming in. And now the glaives are coming in, dealing with the enemy glaives. Lori's glaives are dealing with Klon's glaives, but the Zeus able to get in range... Now, this is the best time for the Warriors to come in at this point. A nice flank coming in from Lori on Klon's sides, both sides of his base. So, we'll see how that works out. And it looks like the Glaives and Warriors to the north are being pushed away, but to the south, the Warriors are able to come in pretty much with impunity. Some Glaives trying to defend, but of course, we know how that goes. The Glaives will die, the Warriors will take... Actually, wow, actually, the Warriors taking a fair amount of damage, come to think of it. That Glaive is going to win. Just barely wins. I mean, admittedly, eight or so. But I mean, eight or so Glaives died in the process. Still, that's... That's a dead warrior. Which is, in this case, a big timing thing. Because that warrior could have come in... The pair of warriors could have come in and just torn apart this base. But only one warrior is not going to have a, much of a chance. And at this point, the north side is much less well defended... Looks like, however, there will be some changes. Actually, it looks like Lori's forces will be able to just distract. The Glaives are distracting the Zeus is long enough for the Warriors to deal some damage. Actually, the Glaives also dealing a fair amount of damage. The Warriors, however, not moving in. They're not engaging. At the same time, the Warrior to the south is trying to get rid of what forces it can. At this point, Klon has 20 build power going into that factory. Lori has most of his build power going into a brawler. The first brawler is up. Keep an eye on that one because that brawler is going to be probably changing the course of this particular fight. Hard to say though, it looks like... No, Lori's retreated pretty hard. Now, the south attack here, this is going to be pretty big. And that's 
that's gonna actually take out all these builders here. Okay, I just got okay, it's it's a it's a thing. It's a widget that allows you to do that. That QA drawing was pretty impressive though. <clears throat> Even if it was just a widget thing, still. Nicely done. Anyway. Lori is Well He is able to deal some damage to this. It is gonna be hard for Klon's forces to deal with the brawler. That is one thing to keep in mind. But everything else around here is not a problem. At this point, only 15 metal is going into the factory, into the clickbot factory. The rest of it is going into building brawlers. And, okay, at this point, now we have all the metal going into the clickbot factory, getting a bunch of glaives. The brawler is forcing back all of Klon's forces. It's gonna, it's about to get rid of one of the Zeus's, in fact. There we go, one of the Zeus's is down. And at the same time, the brawler to the south, getting rid of the glaives. It looks like Lori is going to be able to take this match once again. It looked like he had it before, and looked like he was losing it. And look like he's going to take it back from here with the Brawlers. Now, Jethro's are exactly what's coming up. And it's about four of them that are up so far. Actually, more than four. There are five that are up so far. That is one more than four, strictly speaking. But this Brawler is... I mean, the Brawlers have such high health that it... it the Jethro's matter. The Jethro's do deal enough damage quickly enough that it does make a difference. But the Defender, not so much. So these Glaives are going down very quickly. No extra brawlers are coming up, but that is definitely buying time for a ton of glaives to be built up. At this point, that ton is left to be delivered. About 10 glaives so far. But once all the glaives are set up now, admittedly, that does mean there's a lot of Jethro's that are completely useless against ground forces. So these glaives have basically fodder. So that's going to be something to worry about. However, the glaives of the south, that's where it's really a big story. That's where it's going to be powerful. Looks like about a dozen glaives, a little over 14 glaives to the south. Well, now it's about a dozen. 14 glaives to the south that are just tearing apart everything with ban with brawler support. Looks like basically this is going to be... However, a tick, a tick possibly turning the tide. A bunch of Jethro's are going to come in to try to deal with this brawler. The brawler, however, is able to get rid of most of the stuff that's defending us. The Jethro's are able to get in range and actually kill the brawler. Get rid of the brawler, get rid of most of the glaives. Far more glaives coming from the north, however, but no extra brawlers. There is one brawler to the north and is being repaired. The Jethro's are actually in position and not a great position, mind you. Brawler from the north would, actually, glaives from the north would tear them apart. Glaives at all would tear them apart. In fact, all the forces that would stop glaives are far too far southwest, or far too far in the center south side, far too far west from the Jethro's for glaives to be defended against. The glaives could just simply, and that's exactly what they're doing. There's, wow, 30 glaives coming in. Coming very directly into Klon's base, and Klon well aware of this. He knows that he knows it's coming. He has radar. He can see what's going on, but he also doesn't have a whole lot to deal with this. The Jethro's can do nothing. The Brawler isn't even coming in, but there's so many players coming. Now Zeus's are coming in. In fact, hardly taking any time at all to come in, too. Taking a few seconds to come in, but well, the walking part is the problem. However, that doesn't matter. Klon throws in the towel, and Lori gets bronze in the 2011 one day. January 11th. There's got to be a better name for this tournament. Whatever. The point is, congratulations to Lori on winning third place. Although, hopefully I get updated sooner or later. But yeah, congrats on Lori. Gets third place. And that is... That is going to be... The third game. So, we are on to the finals pretty soon. No, nothing's there. So, we're on to the finals pretty soon. And that will be between God and Drone, which will be pretty much starting now, so stay tuned. <laughs>